All right, the first thing we did was, just as someone suggested, we reduced the call to action to one call to action, and we moved it lower on the template. So let's see what that looks like. So she actually just kind of moved that down there and eliminated the second one right there. So interesting, that might put us below the fold on some of these mobile devices, but we'll get to that in a minute. So what was the next thing that you did? The second thing we did was add some narrative style introduction copy. Really? Yes. Somebody just said take copy away. And, uh, and I hear that a lot, by the way. That's not, um, we, a lot of people say that you know, mobile device users don't want to read. Right, so this seems kind of counterintuitive, so we'll ask you about that in a minute. Let's take a look at the third change. Third thing we did was to remove the explanation header and we increased that text size and moved the image around a little bit. Okay, so let's see what this actually looks like. All right, so it's a little bit, uh, seems like it's a little bit clear, and then what was that final fourth change? The final thing was we removed the secondary banner ads. Really, and, and when, I, when I took a look at a number of their emails from the past you know, six months prior to the campaign, they'd have maybe one or two different ads for featured products in that space, right? Yes. Okay, so audience, let's play. <laughs> let's take a look. Why did you think she made all of those changes? Knowing what you know about the campaign, knowing what you know about the template and its role, why do you think she made those changes? Anybody? I'm looking for hands. The lights are kind of bright. We've got one up here, Joey. Or, okay, there you go. Good. The focus of an email is a click. So the getting one primary call to action, it's very focused on what you want the user to do. Okay. What else? What else? Why else would you think she'd make those changes? We've got one up here. Since these are your, um, your continuing customers, right, uh, they are most likely want to have a relationship with you, and so the conversational style fits this type of customer. If it was a brand new customer, you might not want the conversational style, but, but I can see how it fits here. You're developing that relationship. Interesting. Very good. What else? So we've got one uh, in the middle here. Joey, turn around. Joey's on my team. I like to tease him. I don't get a chance to, so this is fun. You mentioned that a lot of your audience was on mobile devices, mm -hmm. and this template looks like it's much more optimized for mobile. The How images so? are on the right, and the CTA is clear in the center. Okay, interesting. Very good. So, Jessica, let's walk through the why, and let's start with two things that really kind of stand out, the call to action amount and the banner ad. Why? looking hindsight, just kind of looking back, why would you do that? So I wanted to um, disarm the customer. I didn't want it to be click here, buy now, all these um, distractions and multiple calls to action. So we reduced it just to that one, got rid of those additional ads and all the distracting things. And it's interesting, because when I was looking at this, it, it reminded me probably something we'll hear from Danny Ariella tonight, it's called categorization, where they just kind of look at an email and can tell what it's really about. So by removing that call to action, it's almost as if you are just moving it down. It's almost as if you're like saying, hey, this is something worth looking at. Don't dismiss it. So what about the copy though? Why add the copy? I thought mobile re users didn't like to read. Well, I really wanted to connect with the customer. Like you were saying, it's, it's a relationship. These are our loyal customers. I wanted to have a conversation with them. So we added some personalization and that more conversational style. 